Good evening, everyone. How's it going? Welcome back here to a Tuesday night, January 13th, 2026. 9.12 in the p.m. here uh, along the West Coast in California. Uh, latest activity at 2.5 across, uh, let's see where we're at, 2.5, hiding somewhere down there. It looks like across the uh, Indonesia area there in the red flag. Uh, California, Northern California specifically, seen a little increase in earthquake activity out here. Uh, and that's also showing up here in the last hour near Covalo. That's up along the uh, fault systems to their north, Bartlett Springs fault system. Uh, definitely seen some increasing movement out here across the uh, coastal range fault systems. And, of course, that's a good indicator of uh, stress along the San Andreas Fault. North of Ukiah here had a 4.4 earthquake earlier uh, this afternoon. That was felt uh, across the area there in, in uh, Northern California. Quite a few reports coming in there for that 4.4, mainly across Ukiah area, down to Clear Lake, and it looks like uh, around the Willits area as well. That, uh, you know, not a big earthquake. Uh, they're putting out a little aftershock forecast here. I really don't pay that much attention to it because it really doesn't mean anything. I've learned to uh, kind of ignore that. I look at what's going on historically around the area, what's going on regionally. Uh, there's been a number of aftershocks in that area as well, including the 3.8. Now, the Makama Fault here, it's just off of the Makama Fault. That's a fairly lengthy fault system uh, that sits to the west and northwest there of Clear Lake. Uh, it does kind of extend down here towards other fault systems, which runs into eventually the Rogers Creek Fault. It's a fairly lengthy fault system out there. And uh, just kind of watching this closely here. Someone mentioned that this happens all the time in this area. So I went ahead just for verification purposes, went in here and checked and see uh, if this occurs all the time in this area. Pulled up 4.0 and above in the last 26 years. Well, uh, this is a far cry from all the time. Our last 4.2 in this area was back in 2020. 2019, seen a 4.3. And then it was many years before that. Uh, or previous to that, we had a 2.6. So uh, to say this happens all the time in this area would be a false statement. Uh, but we're definitely getting some earthquake activity out here. And again, it's all part of an increasing seismic event out across the West Coast. You know, I talk about all these swarms that are stirring up around the San Ramon area, a more recent one south of Livermore. Looks like we even got a little swarm stirring up, back up around the Pacifica area. This has been pretty active as well. If we go back the last two months or so, this number would be much higher uh, than the 11 showing up there on the map. Uh, and what it all means? Well, it, it means that pressure is increasing out here across the West Coast. Uh, it's just good to be on guard here as things are increasing. This is not a sign of pressure releasing out here regionally. It might be locally in some areas, you know, but then again, the Makama Fault here. Oh, I don't know. What can it produce there? I, I know it can produce a significant size earthquake. Um, let's take a look here when our last decent one was out there across the uh, Makama Fault. I'm going to modify the search here a little bit and pull up 5.5. Uh, oh, man, that keeps popping up. And we're just going to go back here to the year 1000, and uh, we're going to keep that on the map there and pay attention here to the Makama Fault. There's really not, uh, wow, really not a whole lot of historical activity on there. That's a little concerning. Uh, if we haven't had any recent activity on that big fault system, then that means we could be seeing that in the near future. Uh, right? If you think about it. I mean, I can't say we had a, you know, 6.0 on that back in uh, 1990, and it's going to be another 100 and 200 years before we see another one, but there's nothing listed up there on the Makama Fault. Let me double check, make sure I got that covered right, because that's a little concerning there. Um, I'm going to go down south here just a little bit more and see what we got. Now, there's one earthquake here of a 5.6 back in 1869, but I know. Uh, that this can produce a much bigger earthquake. I mean, that's a fairly lengthy fault system here. Very lengthy. So 6.7 over here on the uh, San Andreas Fault back in 1898. That was actually uh, six, seven, eight years before the 1906 earthquake there, the 7.9. Did 
Uh, we do got to be paying attention to these little swarms that are occurring all across. Uh, it seems to be mainly north here of the um, park field section. I mean, this area has gotten a, a bunch of earthquake swarms here recently. San Francisco area specifically. Hayward Falls got a little earthquake on that area as well this evening with a 1.5. Uh, but just be on guard here, folks. This may be a sign here of something bigger about ready to pop in the region. Uh, appreciate the reports coming in there, uh, folks feeling it. Even in negative reports, you know, I've seen a couple of those. Why are you fear-mongering? This happens all the time in this area. <laughs> yeah, no, it doesn't. We don't get a 4.4 all the time in that area. All right, further down the line here, nothing going on along the park field section of the San Andreas Fault. Pretty quiet there for now. Most of the movement up north. Uh, Southern California, roughly about that time as the uh, four-pointer and the other earthquakes were striking up north, we had a 3.1 down here. And it looks like maybe a little swarm going on. Uh, and that's not in a good area. That's just off the southern branch here of the San Andreas Fault, the locked area that has not had any major rupture here in over 300 years. See that dark section there lit up on the uh, map? Well, that segment did not rupture back in 1857 when the last big earthquake struck on the southern branch of the San Andreas Fault. So we're looking at 169 years now since the uh, uh, big event down there. The concerning factor of this is that now, since the southern portion here, the extreme southern portion did not rupture with the rest of the fault, that means that the entirety here will go. Uh, the full southern branch of the San Andreas Fault, resulting in a bigger earthquake than the 7.9. 8.1 with this added section down here. So we are definitely uh, coming up here for some big activity. The question is when. And uh, we just got to look at these little signs. Uh, I don't know if we've had too much activity out here recently. Really not. This is the last 30 days of activity, so we don't see a whole lot of movement happening there just off that southern branch, the extreme locked area. Uh, so watch watch that closely there. Could be a bad sign. Another one up north here on the San Andreas Fault, the southern end. That was late last night. But this newer activity is, uh, stirred up roughly about the same time as the movement up north. Also, the swarm stirring up here around Johannesburg area again this afternoon, including a 3.1. So we're looking at a regional broad event here, except for a little segment along the park field section, but I know that's building up some steam. Uh, but we're seeing elevated signs here of earthquake uh, stress. Just be on guard. Up in the Pacific Northwest, pretty quiet up there. Uh, one earthquake there around Mount Hood. I guess we better go double check that and see what we have uh, across the uh, Mount Hood area. By the way, the trimmer counts here tonight shows us... Um, uh, dying off a little bit. 78 epicenters there underneath the northern end of the Cascadia subduction zone. And those are slow slip, uh, low frequency uh, vibrations there that are picked up as the two plates slide slowly past one another. Uh, but obviously that's building up steam across the locked area. Uh, let's go to Mount Hood, see what's going on there. I haven't checked that in a little while. So there's a little earthquake out there today. Um... Let's see here. Those guys are showing. Oh, that's from last night, it looks like. But uh, we'll double check that and see what we have. Uh, Palmer Lift is really not the best station to look at because sometimes it interferes with stuff. But um, let's see what we got here. takes a little bit to load, but man, the, the layout here and the options that are available here to the public are nice. There's the little earthquake from last night. Very small earthquake, but it showed up quite nicely there on that seismograph station. And of course, you can increase the amplitude readings out here to make uh, things that may be happening in the background as far as smaller quakes kind of pop out. And it looks like there was a couple of smaller ones, but really nothing big going on there. Uh, that could be the Palmer lift noise. Um, you know, there's always stuff making noise up there across that seismograph station. Uh, Yellowstone National Park, two earthquakes being reported. But, you know, my, my instincts here tell me to go check it. Just double check, make sure there's no swarm going on. 
because we've seen swarms in the past and uh, nothing showing up on the USGS map. But it looks pretty quiet. There's not a whole lot going on there for now. Pretty quiet conditions. Um, yeah, pretty quiet there. All right, rest of the country here. Got uh, not a whole lot going on. Just some earthquake activity around the Texas area. Uh, let's take a look here at the global view of things. Another newer earthquake up north into the Curl Cam Chatka, 5.1, fairly recent. Also back down south here, 4.2. Watch that middle point boundary. This area is locked and capable of producing an earthquake in excess of an 8.0 and higher. This area can actually produce a 9 pointer, so got to watch that closely. Uh, let's see, Philippines area southward, pretty good cluster going on out, out there with a bunch of fours. Nothing big, but uh, it's a pretty active out there for sure. Nothing major going on across New Zealand. Earlier today, uh, they had a 4.9 down there across North Island. That uh, happened about 2 o'clock my time early in the morning, early Tuesday morning. So, But uh, really nothing new to report across that area for now. Uh, the rest of the world here, just typical movement. The Atlantic Ocean, pretty quiet. Mediterranean region, some older quake activity out there. But uh, it appears as though we're getting the uh, pressure out here across the west coast. So just be on guard. Little sea flare activity, it looks like. Um, upper sea flare. And I know exactly where that's coming from. It looks like there's another active area back there on the far side. So we have two de decent regions coming up here. All right, we got a little bit better view here of this massive area. That's, wow, that's a huge one. I have a feeling that one's going to be a little bit of trouble coming up here this uh, uh, time around. It does have quite a bit of complexity. I'm probably going to bump up my flare threat here tonight looking at that ginormous sunspot area. Also, we got another region back over here. Can't really see too much of it. I see a little bit of complexity here between the colors indicating that uh, uh, magnetic complexity, but... Man, that's definitely uh, looks like we could be entering into a little active period. This one's even starting to grow. And that's uh, currently eight Earth facing. So looking at that, uh, probably going to raise the flare thread up here to about 60% chance here because we have these newer sunspots plus a growth there within 43.40. It's grown quite a bit there since this morning's um, image update. Uh, 4341, probably going to raise up the flare threat here to probably about 5% chance here for some X flare activity. Just the way that looks, fairly massive and tight complexity uh, with the pol uh, polarities there, negative and positive. Uh, so, yeah. And then, of course, flare threat in the uh, C department going to go way up to probably around 99% chance or so. We'll definitely watch that. Because remember this area that's coming around the bend there, 4341, produce a pretty significant m flare here a couple days ago got to go back here to the seven day to see that that was a long duration uh m flare event along with the subsequent cme and there's our most recent uh it looked like it peaked out in the m flare almost uh, so things are going to start stirring up here on the sun once again folks plus we have a coronal hole number 15 that's uh looking fairly decent there in terms of coverage area uh that is earth uh, will be earth directed here in a number of days at center disk here of the sun as far as the equator uh, center area equator area of the sun that uh, will be perfectly li perfectly lined up with the earth sun plane i'm tired had a it wasn't too bad of a day just kind of tuesdays are just blah in general no major roars in the forecast but you know thinking that things will change here in the days ahead as we get those active regions coming back into view. Nothing major for severe weather for now. Pretty quiet out there across the board for uh, that department. I haven't really seen any major changes out here across the uh, weather forecast either. Just a bunch of cold air coming down from Canada across the east. Bringing with it uh, dry conditions. I mean, there's going to be a little bit of snow. It's not until towards the end of January january we start noticing a little bit of more moisture coming up there from the south this could spell some severe weather troubles there across the south as we head towards uh the end of january uh not a blink of not even a drop of rain out there for california right now that looks not good hopefully this changes this is very bad news i mean right now yes it's still wet uh, we picked up quite a bit of rain here in the last month 
I picked up 10 inches of rain in three weeks here between December and January, early January. We haven't had much rain recently, but uh, that's good. But, man, we need February and March to be wet. Otherwise, uh, we'll be back in the drought really quick because we're getting behind. Each day that goes by without any further rainfall puts us further and further behind. But that's the forecast out there. The next uh, several runs there to about the 30th of January. Some precipitation accumulation down there across Texas and the south. But that could be severe weather. Even could be some ice and some snow with that cold air that's going to be intermixing there. All right, uh, let's see what we got here for the seismos. Pretty quiet across the board there. Just keep an eye on the West Coast. San Francisco area has been, uh, you know, it's been having a lot of activity around it. It's possible, you know, very possible here that we could see uh, a big earthquake out here on a number of these faults, including the San Andreas Fault. Uh, you know, I, this, the 1906 earthquake is a more recent earthquake on the San Andreas Fault. Um, compared to other segments, you know, such as down south and the southern branch, 169 years now uh, for this area. There's a Parkfield section that has earthquakes of 6.0 every 20 to 22 years. Our last one was back in 2004. Uh, this one's only 100 and, um, 120 years now, but, you know, it's, it's possible we could see some large earthquake activity. I don't think it'd be up around the 7.9 up here, but it could be. Uh, a large event anywhere out here along the plate boundary and these subsequent faults that sit inland and previous to the plate boundary are well primed uh, for some big earthquake activity you know these these earthquakes that are happening recently that a lot of people are feeling and that are not normal you know when people think of california yes we do get earthquakes and we get them every single day uh, but when these four pointers come in it, it, those are not very common we don't get them all that often and then when they mix in with swarms everywhere around the area, that's, you know, not a good sign. So we do got to be on guard, folks. Make sure you download that uh, MyShake early alert notification system. Uh, it'll save you some seconds there if uh, you're in an area where there will be an, a big earthquake. You know, it kind of gives you a heads up. Hey, uh, expect some shaking, drop cover, hold on. You know, whether you have one second or 20 seconds, you know, anything is better than nothing uh, when it comes to... Uh, getting caught off guard when it comes to a big earthquake like that so make sure you download it it's called my shake we'll catch you guys out here for the wednesday morning update have a good one folks i am headed to bed i've been pretty fortunate here but getting uh getting in bed a little early take care we'll see you guys out here in the morning